The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. Oh my god, it's been too long since I've been able to make that intro. Ah! I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-hosts with me are Holly Christine. Hello. And Gonzo Link. Hi uh, there. Yes, I am picking up things that I am I am in I am basically incorporating things I've learned on my other podcasts when I have two or more, introduce them separately. So it's not so much of a clusterfuck. <laughs> Uh, Only took you how many how many podcasts? Uh, too many. Too many. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I know. I think on this one we're up to what what thirty seven, thirty six, something like that. Oh. Something. Yeah, I think we're creeping on forty. Yeah, we need to get up there. Oh boy. But um, but yeah. So before we he- get into what we're gonna talk about, since it's been a while, how how have each of you been? <laughs> life has been a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Have too much work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've I've been working a lot too. I got a. I don't know if uh, if I talked about this when um <laughs> the last podcast because it's been so long, but I, I got a job <laughs> as a baker. <laughs> and I've been doing that. Uh, yes, really you fun. did mention it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making bagels. Um, just uh, I don't know, just trying to stay busy. Apart from that, doing theater here in uh in July actually, and then. Yeah, no, directing a play. I'm excited as shit for that. Sweet. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Just a little oh, bit. Gosh. <laughs> oh, God, it's hard work. But, yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, and that's this is this is fun. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, as... This story. Yeah. Yeah, we've we'll got this week. Uh, and, and, unfortunately, this is, this is going to be a weird tie-in, but... But um, as for me, those who have listened to my shows more often know that you know, since I've been back in Florida, you know, scratching with my folks, they've had... <laughs> I'm four- sorry, I'm just already laughing at, yeah. like, the inappropriateness of this segue. It is. I admit it. I very much admit it. But, oh, God. I, I admit it. I admit it is, it is, it is on there. <laughs> but, uh, this, but, but, you know... We gotta get out that last bit of, of good news before we dive into the shit. Uh, it's just kind of unfortunate, I guess, the timing. But sure. um, for those for those who have followed me for past few years or whatever, you know, you know that I've had to move back to Florida, crash with my folks again, and they've been having to take care of four foster kids for the past few years. They are finally able to go home with their mother. In fact, just a couple of hours before we started recording, they 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 left with their mother, and except for having to come back and pick up a few things over the next few days, they they, they do not live here anymore. They are back with their mother. So hooray! <laughs> so essentially, the messed up recording schedule we have for this podcast is now become impeccable. Yes, I have a lot more flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be great, and and hopefully that flexibility will allow me to do other things as well, uh, especially video stuff. Like I kind of want to get back into. But for now, with the with the most horrible segue we could even think of, or I could even think of for this particular episode, uh. we, do we talk about? Yeah, you see, you've seen the title, you've seen, you've seen the description. Josh, mother, well, not even motherfucking daughter. Oh. Mm. And everything around that. Oh, I have a special berserk button for people like him, and people who defend him blindly. And I mean blindly, you know, or or even not even blindly, going to the point of victim blaming. Which, <laughs> if, if you if you've done any kind of research or looking into just what kind of things the Quiverful movement actually teaches and, and indoctrinates their kids into yeah <sighs> yeah this this shit is pretty bad I mean it I mean mol- mol- molesting or raping anybody is, is bad enough but it's just it really is especially evil when it's done to somebody who is just coming up in the world you know is just is just having you know just learning stuff, you know, their minds are developing, and then all of a sudden, just the worst possible thing happens, and they have to live with it. Yeah. Uh, so, 
So for those who have been, I don't know if they've been blessed or not, of, of, of not hearing this before, this this uh, first news link that we've got here actually ties into it. Um, Josh Duggar, the star of the hit TLC reality show 19 Kids and Counting, has confessed to molesting female children, including his sisters, when he was a teenager. Uh, mm. Of course, this mm. confession came only after the story has been going viral, so now he's resigning from the Family Research Council, the entity that tells us how sinful gay people are. Because, of course, this is this is the same family. I, I, I believe it was Michelle Duggar who was doing all the, like, the robocalls or whatever around Fayetteville, Arkansas, and all, all, yep. all of that. Same That's thing. his mom. Yep, that is oh. his mom. And she was saying things like, oh, you know, you, you got to think of the children because transsexuals and gay people, they're, they're going to molest your children. No. <laughs> when, it, <laughs> when it's been shown over and over again, no, they don't give a shit about your kids. Not in that way. No, it's, and it's just like the whole deal is like, does nobody really realize at this point that it's not limited to one type of per like that not you know not to like create the whole fear or anything but it could be anybody it could be any type of person it could be any orientation it could be they could be straight they could be gay they could be transgender they could be cisgendered they could have no gender yeah. they could be completely asexual okay maybe maybe not asexual but still i mean like they could it's not uh oh, i don't even know why i have to explain that so yeah it's a Read on with this story. TMZ reports, Josh Duggar has resigned as executive director of the Family Research Council, acknowledging he sexually molested underage girls, including some of his sisters, calling his conduct inexcusable. At, at least there's that. It's not enough, but at least there's that. You know. Yeah, I mean, at least he's coming out and not... Well, okay, never mind. That's just... That's about, the, that's about square one. That's like as low... as Where you need to start from. Yeah, it's like, my behavior, molesting young children, including my sisters, inexcusable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't really argue that point. No. Good, yes. you, you're, you're at the very bottom. Keep yeah. going. Yes, Josh just told people, 12 years ago, as a young teenager, I acted inexcusably, for which I am extremely sorry and deeply regret. He continues, we spoke with authorities where I confessed my wrongdoing, and my parents arranged for me and those affected by my actions to receive counseling. Mm. Molestations occurred in 2002 and 2003 when he was 14. He fondled the genitals and breasts of the girls, some of whom were sleeping. <laughs> Creepy. Uh. Josh's wife, Anna, says he confessed his past teenage mistakes to her two years before he asked her to marry him. The incidents were not reported to police until 2006, and the statute of limitations has now long since passed. Well, so, we... nobody did anything. No, not really. Nobody did anything. Of course not. Uh, TMZ reports that police are about to destroy the documents. By the way, this is this is an earlier one. We've got a later one that says, yeah, they uh, they've already destroyed the documents in the molestation case. After one of his alleged victims asked the judge to protect her identity, the victim, refer, only referred to as Jane Doe in the docs, was worried an unredacted copy of the police report might get out. Josh went on to say that he believes God has shown him mercy and given him redemption. No. No. You know, you, you may have prayed to God, and, and, you know, you may feel it. Okay, fine. You know, you may feel that, like your burden is lifted a little bit. You know, you confess your sins. You've prayed to God. That's all fine and dandy. You know, so your your spirit, your soul may be in in line with your God. And, and you know what? Whatever. Um, that doesn't account for the countless numbers of other people that think you're a slime bag. Okay, so here here we go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play devil's advocate on this one. Okay. All what right. he did was morally reprehensible. Yes. Why does it matter? Why does it matter that it's morally reprehensible, or why does it matter that God forgave him? Why does it matter to you that, that he feels like God forgave him? Honestly, to me personally, and, and, I, and, I, and I know I posted this very story on Facebook as well, and it's like, you know, hey, you know what? God forgave you. Fine, good for you. I haven't because again, I think like I said towards the beginning, it's kind of one of those things. It's like you touched little children. He sexually. was fourteen. Yeah, he was still he was fourteen, but you know, I I, I like to think that most fourteen year olds understand even in even in the environment he was brought up in. I would like to think 
that they would know better than to touch little children in that way. I would like to think. Girls can't wear pants, but you think that they understand that touching somebody who is sleeping is bad. Well, <laughs> like I'm just I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around the logic because I see a lot of people really upset about this, and it's like you you, you know the child grew up in a cult. Like, uh, can I accurately guess what he understood as right and wrong? No. Yeah. That's a very have, that's actually a really good point because that, that no brings up the bigger idea. issue of what sort of fundamentalism teaches kids about. It's sort of the you know the the I, I guess like the grayer areas mm-hmm. of right and wrong. It's just like well okay I I'm doing this 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 thing. I'm not sure it's right, but you know what? Even if it's wrong, I'll I'll st- I can still ask for forgiveness and God will give it to me, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean I I, I can certainly un- yeah it does, yeah it doesn't make it any less reprehensible, but right. I mean it, 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 what he did was wrong and he shouldn't have done it. Right. But why does he need your forgiveness? No, well, he doesn't need it. <laughs> right, and, and see, but but that's sort of the argument that you're making, because you said, well, great, God forgave you, but I didn't. Why does it matter if you forgive him or you're not? You know, that is a very fair point. He tech, he really doesn't, at least not mine specifically. You know, the forgiveness of his victims and, and the other people that he's hurt, yes, I, I think he would need that. You know, I, I, at least I think so. I could be wrong. Well, uh. <laughs> I think personally, per, personally, I, I I feel that now the ball is just it's squarely in his court, and he's you know he's seems to be running with it in the right direction, but it definitely seems like he's stumbling a bit along the way, just because yeah. of the whole. We spoke to authorities where I, I confess my wrongdoing. Okay, that's good. My parents arranged for me and those affected by my actions to receive counseling. Again, that's actually. That's that's good, but did they did, did did he separate from the family after that? Did they try and separate him from those kids? Because like obviously yes. Okay, yeah. then good. <laughs> that's that, that's then, actually that's... part of the stories that have been going around. But he mm-hmm. was actually sent away to live with another family for a while. Yeah. Let me just say that I am actually one of these people, Gomer, that you mentioned that has like been kind of ignorant about most i've only heard the basis of what i need to know and i'm just like i don't want anything to do with this really yeah <laughs> i mean i i feel uncomfortable enough talking about it it's just it it, it just definitely i think deserves discussion oh yeah definitely and and to be to be perfectly clear and perfectly honest with this whole situation surprisingly for me it's you know josh is probably the least that I have an issue with. I mean, I have a major issue with him molesting young girls, even even at fourteen, you know. But that also comes there's you know, you know I I have seen an ex well not experienced it, but I have seen it happen with people that are close to me, you know, family members, etc. And that that still kind of just kind of riles me up a little bit, just for full disclosure here. And so that does, but I can say with certainty that what he did. In it, well, obviously in and of itself, again, very reprehensible. But compared to what some of other people are doing around this, you know, either either trying to cover it up, you know, by you know destroying the investigation records, or or by defending him blindly and and not even calling him out for his behavior, even as a teenager. You know, when especially when it's so unbalanced, because I'm willing to bet if any one of us had done the same thing he did when he was 14, we probably would have so many books thrown at us, we would be dead from countless letters. Ah, I'm willing to bet. But see, and I don't think that's very likely. I mean, yeah, he did happen to run into, you know, the the guy who the police officer who was in charge or sheriff or I. I don't re- recall his exact position. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it turns out that he, you know, was later found with like a giant stash of child pornography and whatever. So yeah, he he got lucky. Yeah. In that respect, of he came across somebody who was very sympathetic to his plight. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I don't think that he was particularly any more likely to get off than any of us would have been in that situation. Yeah. 
Although, although none of us are also members of families that are more that are affluent like the Duggars, because let's face it, they are pretty affluent in at least in their area. They are now. Yeah, definitely. I, I, yeah. I mean, but you have to think like this was ten years ago when mm-hmm. when things with with them were just getting started. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I know I know Jim Bob was I want to say he was a senator or or or, or some kind of uh, political position in Arkansas, and uh, he ran for office, but I don't think he ever. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I I knew there was some political thing there. I don't remember if he was there. That that I I admit I didn't have that on hand. But, uh, yeah, it says he served in the Arkansas House of Representatives from 99 to 02. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so this happened while he was in office, so they had a little bit more influence. And I've also heard, I don't think I don't think I found it in any one of the links here that I have, unfortunately, but um, but I also heard that the same cop that he talked to was also a family friend. Mm-hmm. So, you know, not just, you know, somebody who eventually got busted for child porn, but somebody who... The Duggars could say, hey, you know what, he did this thing, can you, like, give him a talking to, a scaring or whatever, you know, can talk the guy, because he's a friend of the family, into not, basically not doing his job. Which... Well, the other thing is, this information didn't, I mean, it didn't even get brought to the police's attention mm-hmm. until years after it happened. Yeah, and this was, uh, I think, what was it, 2006, I believe the article says? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So three years later, so like uh, maybe we should take it to the cops because this is kind of a thing. It's like it... uh, they didn't even take it to the police. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a letter written that was found in a book that mentioned the situation, and somebody had borrowed the book that the letter was slipped inside of, and read it and took it to the police, and that's how the police found out. Oh, now that I hadn't read at this point. Wow. Oh dear. So they, they I, I bet you they they wouldn't have even gone to the police. It's just, uh, and that's where we get into more of the things that kind of get at me a little bit deeper because it's like they 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 wanted to you know I could understand like to some degree wanting to keep it from like extreme public view or what have you, but at the same time you're also not doing him any favors because you know he he you know he needed to be legally taken to task for let's face it, a crime. I mean, as a juvenile, I don't know if they would have went any harder or any easier on him because he was a juvenile, but he needed more than a stern talking to and some hard labor, I think. You know, you know, maybe some time in juvie, I don't know. But And, and then it's just, oh, God. <laughs> and then, but then well, you have feel... to ask the question, would that have helped any? Would that have changed the situation at all? Well, I... see, here's the, th- here's the thing. I... I really don't. I honestly don't don't think it would have because mm-hmm. the way that uh, okay uh, again this is sort of playing devil's advocate, but this is more just sort of in a, in a general response to how people handle when, whenever there is allegations of child molestation or just pedophilia in general. It seems like that is it's literally all the public needs to immediately rally against and not you know to say that that's without good reason because if somebody is genuinely molesting children or engaging in pedophilic activities then that's bad it's not good at all and it's it's extremely unhealthy and that person needs help i mean if i mean maybe that help needs means that they need to be isolated from everybody because they have they it's it's too strong they've got they've gone too far with it and it's 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 just something that they can't control. Who knows really what what it is? And the reason why we don't know what it is is because there's no fucking education about it. And there's nobody that actually like really wants to sit down with these people and be like, what what is it? What's what goes on in that in that brain of yours? Why? Yeah. There's no and there's no education and there is absolutely like no sympathy. And again. Not without a lot of good reason, because it's a fucking heinous activity. Mm-hmm. It's horrifying. It's it's not okay at all. But that doesn't mean that these people shouldn't try and get help from it, because, you know, if they get help and we learn something from it, mm-hmm. maybe we can help prevent it. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely. And, and let's be clear to the listeners. Mm-hmm. What happened was not pedophilia. Right. Um no. He he's not he's not technically he was not technically old enough at the time that it happened for it to have been considered pedophilia. Right. Right. 
I'm just lumping that in with yeah. in general because they can't they get like messed up a lot and people honestly don't know the difference between a pedophile and a child molester. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, even though there's not really a whole lot of difference, I mean, th- there is a difference. Yeah, and that and that difference, I I know I've mentioned it on several shows before. You know, the difference between a pedophile and a child molester. Pedophile just you know just has the urge, but doesn't do anything about it. At least not towards a kid or whatever. He might. You know, write. You know, look at erotic stories or whatever, where no kid is getting hurt. Child molester. We'll go out and diddle real kids. That that's where I draw the difference. It's it's basically is a kid being hurt by this? If the answer is yes, you're a child molester. Basically, you know, by, by your urges. Yeah, it's. But the yeah the, the point being that even if he had gotten counseling, I doubt there would have been anybody who actually would have known what to do. Because yeah. there's nobody who really seems to know what to do about this. Because there's such a stigma, you know, surrounding it. And, again, not without good reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, like, like I was saying, you know, more than just, like, slap on the wrist and hard labor, you know, help. There's nothing that says that help, you know, like going and seeing a psychologist or, or a therapist or whatever to get at all of this. Who's to say that couldn't have been in the cards? But, nope, they, they just... You know, they had to keep it within themselves and just send them off to hard labor. And, and they had to, and from what it seems like, they had to just pretend that nothing was wrong. Yeah. Well, and and kind of bring up something. I wish I'd had the uh, graphic on hand. Unfortunately, I don't have it on hand to send to you guys, but I've got it on my iPad. Um, but you guys might have seen it, which is like a list of ten things uh, in like I think it's for the Quiverful movement when it comes to counseling sexual abuse. And I may have brought it up a little bit on the last thespian talk, but we can go a little bit more in depth here. Um, Number one shows the parts of our being, and it's like a circle within circles within circles with the spirit at the center and the body at the outermost ring, Um, which which could come in handy later. (laughs) Um, But number two asks, which part is the most important? Uh, which is the most important, which is least important, out of spirit, soul, body, will, mind, and emotions. And I am probably describing the first two very horribly, and I do apologize. Um, but uh, let's see, number three says, what do the offender damage? What parts do we damage with bitterness and guilt? Um, yeah, I, I mean, number three, I, I think it is a legitimate, more legitimate question because, yeah, Things can be, things can and usually are damaged with something like this, whether it's your, you know, mind or body or what have you. You know, and number four, and this is where some people are going to start getting pissed off, like me. Why did God let it happen? Result of defrauding by immodest dress, indecent exposure, being out from protection of our parents, being with evil friends. That's kind of, uh, that's the. Uh, 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 mm. That that this that right there is just the kind of mindset that 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 is that was surrounding things. You know, just this this whole quiverful move. Well, I don't want to say the whole quiverful movement, but it's, well, but at least the Duggars in this situation. Yeah, which leads me to believe that you know they say they say they all got help. You know, or what have you. I I question what kind of help his victims got. From especially his sisters, I question it. Just from four things, and there's still six more. Uh, let's see. Number five: Is there any guilt from the uh, from the abuser? I hope so. For disobedience, for not reporting it. For, uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. See Deuteronomy 22, 22 through 24. Failing to report it allows others to also be abused. Which logical? To be fair, that, that you know logical. Clear guilt by confessing it to God, which Josh Duggar has done. Explain the potential of a moral vaccination and a test of genuine love by casting out fear for marriage. That, I, I, I don't, don't even, uh, makes, <laughs> that makes, like, oh, uh, uh, moral vaccination? Moral vaccination, yeah. I, I don't, I don't Any know. other vaccination, no good, no good. We need a moral vaccination because <laughs> apparently God let it happen because of things like immodest dressed or being with evil friends. 
Evil friends. Ah, uh, yes. You know, them damn atheists. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, number six says, If abused was not at fault. Which, which leads me to think that the, at least one or two of the first five is assuming the, the abused was at fault. Wait, the, yeah. What? Uh, if the abused was at fault. Yeah. Yeah. God, well, that, that's quiverful for you. Yeah. Uh, God compensated mm. physical abuse with spiritual power. What is being mighty in the spirit? Greater faith? Spiritual discernment, genuine love, wisdom and understanding, creativity, energy, enthusiasm, joy, inner peace. Creativity, unless it falls outside the bounds of, of our rigid, you know, rigidly religious sect here. Uh, I say sect, but uh, there's a different word for it. Maybe cult? I don't know. Number seven reads, example, Daniel. Extreme abuse, a, a eunuch, wisdom, understanding, counselor to four kings. So, why is Daniel brought into this? I, I guess because of the eunuch, but that, that's just that 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 how how is that? Okay, Daniel was thrown in a den of lions. I mean, granted, he he miraculously survived, but still, you got you got to compare this to being thrown into a den of of, of lions. What the hell? Uh, number Oof. eight. If you had to choose. No physical abuse or mighty in spirit. What would you choose? I don't know about you, but I would choose no physical abuse. Cause and 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 this also this seems to frame it like it's mutually exclusive. You can't have one without the other. Yeah, you can't stand up for yourself, you know, against taking abuse and be a strong person. Uh, to be a, a willful person. How does that even make sense? I, well, I, in terms of quiverful, it makes sense to them because, um, you know, in, in a lot of cases, they consider it, it the, that there's no such thing as abuse. Yeah, I, I, I guess, I, yeah. Between men and women, because as a woman, it's your duty to be there for your husband. Oh, yeah. Like, like that's, that's your sole responsibility in life. Um, there's a quote somewhere, it, it might have been on the show, um, mm -hmm. Where Michelle Duggar basically is telling her daughters, like, you know, when your uh, when your husband uh, wants you in that bed, you know, I'm paraphrasing. I don't know her exact words, but it's basically when your husband wants you, you stop whatever you're doing, and that's what you do because anybody can make him lunch, but only you can take care of what's going on in the bedroom. Yeah. So it's basically like whether you want it or not, that's your job. Uh huh. That's that's your whole that's your sole duty in life is to make sure he gets laid when he wants to get laid. Yeah. yeah. And and listeners to to my shows know that I I I can be a horny bastard. Even me horny bastard status is saying, "No! No, this is not how it should be." And the, you know, no. to for for everybody else if you're quiverful then well. <laughs> it's just really, it's yeah. just such an archaic viewpoint. It's just like you know, I'm the man, you're the woman. I want you now. Let's go. You're mine. Okay. All right. It's just, yeah. How are we how are how, how are some sections of the world still stuck in that? I I, I don't even uh number I mean, nine. I don't even, go ahead. I'm just saying like, you know, even in like more developed countries, you find this you know, this this strongly you know, and mostly patriarchal way of thinking and just the you know the the man is the head of the house, and no, how, why could anyone ever be above a man? Yeah. And I don't know. It's it just mm. just seems stupid. It is. Yes. <laughs> there there is a reason why Quiverful scares the shit out of a lot of people, especially people that I know and I associate with, <laughs> myself included. Uh, number nine reason for bitterness. He damaged your body. Important step: dedicate your body to God. And then they have a picture of like an altar, and and on top I think it's an altar, or on top of it you, you on, it has the words your body. I guess to symbolize that you put your body on the altar to God, and and you know God I guess is supposed to lift away all of that bitterness, you know. So does that mean? Okay, this is going to be a bit of a leap. I understand this, but does that mean that victims that are still 
dealing with this that maybe you have PTSD or, or, or bitterness or any other signs that or, or I say signs or any other things that 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 they would that would go through their mind after something horrific as this they they they're just they just didn't give their soul their, they didn't dedicate their bodies to god or or yep. they were rejected by god it's like what the fuck nope you're never rejected by god you just don't have enough faith yeah apparently uh, number 10 yeah. the last one prayer to dedicate body to god Place yourself on his altar to serve him, forgive offender, turn over to God for his discipline, or ask God to pardon Stephen. I, I don't know who Stephen is. Regain surrendered ground cleanse with Remas? Yeah, I, I, I don't even know what the last one goes to, but forgive offender. Not outside the realm of possibility, but I don't think they would need to be told that. that that's between them and their offender and God. They, they, they don't, you know, because cause I'm, I'm just imagining, you know, going to see a psychologist that, 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 that would, or I say psychologist, I, 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 I question that term if they're, psych, if they're using this to counsel a sexual abuse victim from a, from a quiverful family, but, and, and have that victim be told, you need to forgive your offender. Honestly, you don't have to. If you can, that's great. But nothing says you have to. And I think that's what these victims do need to be told. You don't have to. If you can, great. But, you know, you take care of you. Uh, but that, that is my two cents. And I, and I do realize, you know, who, I'm, who, who these, some of these victims are a part of, and they may not heed that, that advice. Or may, I, I don't even know if they've got, actually gotten the help that they need because of... The structure that they were raised in, which is really kind of sad. Hmm. Well, right. I mean, it's well, just... the, that's the thing that makes me the most sad about this story is that everybody's like, "Oh, Josh Duggar's a huge piece of shit." Like, yeah, what he did was awful. He mm -hmm. was fourteen and he was raised in a cult. I have no idea if he understood how bad the thing he was doing was because. Yeah they're taught their entire lives that that's what women are for. Mm, pretty much. It's... So, so yeah. like, uh, how wrong did he really think that was? Like, yeah. it, it, to uh, us in the outside rational world, you're like, oh, God, that's so horrifying. But in his world, that's not as horrifying as we think it is. And, and that raises even more questions, is when you consider the fact that he did it to his sister's, what kind of fucked up family was he raised in? Right. Yeah, I mean, like, and, what, and then good Lord. statistically, kids who do this to other kids have had somebody do that to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what the hell did he go through? Like, yeah. you know, yeah, there's a lot of okay, great. Uh, you know, he he resigned because he doesn't look like you know the family man that everybody thought he was, and you know, whatever. <laughs> It's sort of my opinion on that. Yeah. Um, but it's like his family, like the, his parents, like that's, dude, that's messed up. Like what happened to your kid and how did you so completely fail them? <laughs> like, because as an adult, uh, I, you know, okay, how how far do you guys go back in the quiverful mo movement? Like it. Have you all just been raised in generations and generations and generations of that? But then there's the part of me that's like, even if you were, like, if if Jim Bob Duggar worked in the, where are they from, Arkansas? Yeah. Arkansas State Senate at that time. Okay, he clearly believes in, in the government and all of that. And, you know, working to protect those who can't protect themselves. So why in the hell... Did he not report this to the police when he should have? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, why did he take this out of the hands of law enforcement? I'm, it's I'm, like, yeah, God can forgive you, but now still, you're playing a whole different game. Yeah, there, there, yeah, 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 God may forgive you, but there are still consequences in this life, in this world, that you still should face. 
Like, right, how do you yeah. work for the government and, and pretend to serve the people and then not do the thing that you should do? Yeah, I'm willing to bet, and, and again, if I'm wrong, let me know, but I am willing to bet that because because of his beliefs and everything, I, I'm just going to say it, religious freedom. I'm willing to bet because because I'm willing to bet at some level he was worried that the cops getting involved would end up infringing upon his religious freedom when they honestly wouldn't and you would think he wouldn't understand this but you know again that's purely a guess on my part i could be mm -hmm. wrong <laughs> here's 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 a theory maybe if josh had been brought in at that point in his life he might have been a bit more willing to explain what was going on if anything was going on and that's yeah. just speculation mm -hmm. it's just hypothesis but right if anything was going on I'll bet Jim Bob was not gonna, you know, about to let it, ha you know, get out, you know, right then and there, or at least not without him saying, like, if you, you know, if you confess to anything, it better be what you did, not what we did. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Right, and, like, this whole thing just comes across as this is a, a family's cover-up, but not of the activity of their son. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Of other activities, perhaps. Well, it's so weird because there's just, I mean, the, well, the fact that they can't actually prosecute him for any of this, none of it's going to get brought into court. Yeah. Yeah. Which, so... it, which it, admittedly, it does kind of irk me a bit, but you know what, at least, you know, legally he's gotten away with it, but in terms of other consequences, he's not. He, he So, you know, I, I will take what I can get on that, personally. <laughs> You know, I mean, he he's facing consequences for his actions, even if it's over ten years late. That that'll be good enough for me. You know, I will take that. Now, we we've talked a lot about the Duggars and the Quiverful movement, and and the and a, a little bit around the mindset around there. You know, with the whole how do you do do the the yeah ah to do the thing with the victims, the 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 the, the, the treat them or what have you. Ah, mm -hmm. my words are escaping me. Because I happen to be looking at an article over at ifyouonlynews.com. Oh, uh, Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee has been a name that, that has come in and out of, of my shows since 2008. That since, since before Thespian Talk ever went to blip. Oh, this guy. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I don't like him. Huckleberry. Yes. Mike Huckabee took to Facebook Friday morning to pin a gushy letter defending Josh Duggar's admitted molestation of young girls, including his own sisters. And to to be uh, fair, it is uh, not this past Friday, but the previous Friday. So, so it, it, the, the article is about a week older than when we're recording it. So, just just to put that out there, so you guys get a good time frame. Huckabee couldn't help but defend the Duggars, bastions of bigotry and ignorance, because they're Christians, making all of their actions excusable in the eyes of God. Here's Huckabee's ridiculous post, with a bit of commentary for good measure. <clears throat> Janet and I want to affirm our support for the Duggar family. Josh's actions when he was an underage teen are, as he described them himself, inexcusable, but that doesn't mean unforgivable. That depends on who you ask. He and his family dealt with it and were honest and open about it with the victims and the authorities. No, they weren't. They brought the matter to the attention of a detective who is now serving 56 years for child pornography, got him counseled at church, declared that God had forgiven him, and swept it under the rug. Otherwise, why would Josh have resigned as soon as the story leaked? Which is a very good question. <laughs> resigned. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much how I think it, what happened there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, uh, you should you probably write up. us a resignation letter. And he yeah. was like, yeah, you're probably right. I probably should. Yeah. Because mm. even... I, 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 I hesitate to say even evil has standards because I don't think they're too inherently evil. But even bigots have standards, I guess. Most of them do. I would assume. Uh, I would hope. Yeah. No purpose what oh wait 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 gotta get the voice. <clears throat> no purpose whatsoever is served by those who are now trying to discredit Josh or his family by sensationalizing the story. Good people make mistakes and do regrettable and even disgusting things. 
The reason that the law protects disclosure of many actions on the part of a minor is that the society has traditionally understood that something that today's bloodthirsty media does not understand. That being a minor means that one's judgment is not mature. Minors are charged with crimes all the time. They are also tried as adults if the crime is heinous enough. What you're saying, Governor, is that we should forego the prosecution of teenagers because they are immature. Sometimes it's best to think before speaking or typing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can definitely attest to that. <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, minors do make mistakes. Kids make mistakes all the time. Kids, teenagers, adults yeah. make mistakes all the time. Hell, I, I don't think I go a day without making a mistake. But, you know, there's yeah, there has Yeah. Yeah, there's mistakes, and then there's, like, yeah, the, and then there's seriously fucking up. Yeah. And, again, even if you don't know how badly that you're fucking up, you, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be held accountable for it. Right. Because sometimes you have to learn the hard way. Oh, yeah. No, the, sometimes the the only way to really learn something is to just have, is to just fuck up flagrantly, mm -hmm. and then have somebody chew you the hell out for it, and you're like, oh, wow. That was really bad. Mm -hmm. That was really, really bad what I just did. I am never going to do that again. Yeah. Uh, no one needs to defend Josh's actions as a teenager, but the fact that he confessed his sins to those he harmed, sought help, and has gone forward to live a responsible and circumspect life as an adult is testament to his family's authenticity and humility. Authenticity, right. Uh, those who have enjoyed revealing this long-ago sin revealing this long-ago sins in order to discredit the Duggar family have actually revealed their own insensitive bloodthirst, for there was no consideration of the fact that the victims wanted this to be left in the past, and ultimately a judge had the information on file destroyed, not to project, d protect Josh, but the innocent victims. Okay, given, given how they handle, you know, abuse victims and how they counsel abuse victims, I I am looking at that with a side eye because I don't know, and with the Duggars because remember they've been in you know Arkansas politics so you know Jim Bob I, I know he's got some influence so I just wonder you know it's all I can do to not make an Arkansas joke right now <laughs> <laughs> but really if it had been reported to the police do you, do you think he still would have gotten in trouble I don't know yeah that is true oh. It's just Jesus. That's like normal, right? They probably just would have gotten married to each other then. Oh. Oh. Sorry, inappropriate joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know what? I got the inappropriate segue. You know, you get, you get the inappropriate joke. <laughs> oh. Somebody needs to notify the Hog and Interpol that we no longer need to search for Hitler's henchmen that got away. Those sins were from a long time ago, and surely they've repented. The notion that a crime disappears or that justice should be sidelined because the Duggars had evidence destroyed. Yes, the Duggars acted on behalf of the victims, not the victims. The victims were too young to make that decision, or is your quote-unquote immaturity argument no longer valid? Janet and I love Jim, Bob, and Michelle and their entire family. They are no more... They are, a, they, are, they are no more perfect a family than any family, but their Christian witness is not marred in our eyes because following Christ is not a declaration of our perfection, but of His perfection. It is precisely because we are all sinners that we need His grace and His forgiveness. We have been blessed to receive God's love, and we would do no less than to extend our love and support to our friends. Um... That... that, 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 that heinous thing... Even teenager, you know, still big consequences. People are going to be... Yeah. Basically, he just said, it doesn't matter what he did. God God forgave him. God just, God's forgiven him. He forgives us all, so what does it matter, really? Why do we need prisons? Yeah, I mean, shouldn't right. we just run them all through, like, a, a like a, a blessing situation? Then we'll just, they'll be fine. We'll, we'll be good, right? We don't need to lock anybody up anymore. We're, we're good, right? Well, I mean, mm -hmm. then you start to get into the nature of criminal justice. You know, prisons aren't there as a sole means of punishing people. You know, they're well, genuinely supposed to reform people. So, yeah. I, I, like, you start yeah. to get into much bigger issues on, well, should we just forget it now that it doesn't matter or not? Yeah. <sighs> right. Yeah. <It, it, laughs> Basically, yeah, just though you don't you don't need anything but but the love of Jesus to keep your family perfect. And if the, and if you still have that love of Jesus and you uh 
you act out heinously. Well, um, uh, 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 your uh, God forgives you. Right. So let's move on. Forget it. it's in the past now. Let's not learn anything from it. Sure, why not? Because that that's always done well for our history, right? Mm. Yeah. Why well, learn from our mistakes when we can just repeat them? Over and yeah. over and over and over again. Let's just burn a library, everybody. Yes. Uh, God is good. Christ is perfect. God, God, God. Anything can be forgiven and or forgotten if you say God enough times. Uh, I'd like to think that, but no. Uh, <laughs> we're glad that you and your wife love Jim, Bob, and Michelle, Governor. We're glad that you're willing to be too blind to see your own ignorance, and we love the votes you'll lose. Not that th not that you had many to begin with, because you now have openly affirmed and not only not only your support, but your love for an admitted child molester. You know, loving him, you know, being friends with him, fine, whatever. But, he, he, you know, I would think from one politician to another, I would think Jim Bob would understand if you keep your distance publicly from them. I think he would understand. Just, yeah. just the thought. Or at least I hope he would. In fact, it is times such as this when real friends show up and stand up. Today, Janet and I want to show up and stand up for our friends. Let others run from them. We will run to them with our support. And like the article writers mentioned, yeah, well, bye-bye votes. And this man who was wanting to run for president in 2016, by the way. Yeah, no. No. Uh, yes, it is always like that with the Christian right. You will defend each other until kingdom come because deep down you are the worst any religion has to offer. You are intolerant, bigoted, ignorant wretches who hate the poor, ignore the teachings of the man you follow for your own personal and financial gain, value life at all costs unless that, that life is a convict or a Muslim, and feel you need to step in and interject your religious views into our lives, our schools, and our government. Your complete and utter failure is now complete, Governor Huckabee. Please go away. Don't go away mad. Just go away. I can agree. Because, oh, fuck Mike Huckabee. In the ear... Yeah, I pretty much went the Sarah Palin track of, like, getting a lot of popular support, doing not really much with it, and then Fox News analyst and yeah. just public figure who says and does things that are infinitely sad. Yeah, sad and make people want to face palm, whether themselves or him. We don't know which yet. Uh, but he his, his defense and... and 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 his open, uh, well, I guess I could say open defense of the Duggars in this case. Uh, you know, and he's gotten some backlash for that too. Very, very justly deserved backlash, not just from people like us, but peop but his own fans. Yeah. So, yeah. That I this is one I found on AlertNet. Yeah, Alert AtlerNet rather. I keep on wanting to say AlertNet, but it's AtlerNet. Uh, dot org. Mike Huckabee's Facebook fans tear him to shreds for defending Josh Duggar. The former Arkansas governor may have finally done something too crazy for his base. Oh dear. Is it bad that, that, that I might get a little excited reading some of the backlash going towards him? Am, am I wrong for that? No, I think schadenfreude is, is a perfectly natural sensation. <laughs> yeah. <and> emotion. Okay. <laughs> so... This this morning, the morning being uh, May 22nd is when this article was posted, GOP presidential contender Mike Huckabee posted a lengthy Facebook status affirming his support for the Duggar family, saying that Josh Duggar, who confessed to molestation, is being attacked by bloodthirsty media and deserves our support. This set off a surprising reaction among Huckabee's Facebook fans, with the chorus of his once supportive Republican loyalists declaring that he had lost their vote over his words on the matter. And they give us a few examples, and and, and you know, what was it? what was it? Just the this the last article is saying, yeah, you're losing votes or what have you. I think it was uh, what was it? Da, 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 da. Yeah, love the votes you'll lose. Yes, uh, well, they're, they're, he's losing them all right. Like one was <laughs> like the first one they have here. Uh, well, you have lost my support. I'm a conservative Christian, was once a Duggar supporter, but I believe that but I believe that 14 years old or not, he should have never been allowed to continue to live in the home with the girls, and the show should have never aired. He damaged those girls for the rest of their lives, and anyone who can carry on and say it's okay now because he admitted he, admitted he was wrong is just as sick as him. Uh, another one says, I respectfully disagree. Not responding to the first comment, responding to Huckabee, to be just to clarify. 
I respectfully disagree. His behavior is unforgivable to me, and so is covering it up and allowing it to continue. Can't hide behind Jesus to excuse all bad behavior. I like this guy. Yeah, I think that's that's like the best the probably the best point out of all this is you can't hide behind your religion to excuse your shitty behavior. Yeah. yeah. And it's like it's basically like I don't know if you've ever seen uh the whitest kids you know sketch uh space potatoes. Uh, this is a very weird segue, I know, and mm-hmm. a very weird point of it go, but Basically, this one of the characters brings a bunch of shit into a uh, the spaceship before they're about to take off, and they're, like, positioned to the... It keeps dropping on his uh, crewmates, and they're going, like, Barry, what the hell? What are you doing? He's like, and he says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And he just keeps doing it and just dropping. So, yeah, that, that basically... I think that that's a, about an accurate summation of the whole... God's on my side. I I, I mean, he forgave me. God forgave me, and I'm sorry that I did it. But God says that it's okay. Yeah, like it's just I, the whole. Yeah, if you can't, there comes a point where you can't say you're sorry. Where an apology, just the words, mean nothing. So, yeah, it's like yeah. okay, you're sorry. You apologize. You've you've asked your God for forgiveness. That that's all well and good, and you know, and and, and I I don't have any. I don't see any reason to disbelieve right off the top of the bat for most people, but um, there, you know, like you were saying, there comes a point where that's not going to be enough, and where you have to ask, "What are you going to do to back it up?" Yeah, what 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 are you going to do to actually make the lives of the people not only that you abused better, but the people of people who have nothing to do with you who have suffered abuse? You know, are you going? Are you genuinely repentful of your actions? Are you, you know? I mean, like I said, the ball is now in his court. What is he going to do with it? Is he going to set up a charity for abuse victims? I kind of doubt it, but if he did, that would honestly be really cool of him. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. Oh, let's see. An- another another, another uh, comment that I want to pick out of here. It says, you are all insane. He molested children, and Mr. Huckabee, if he was a child not aware of his actions, why is a 14-year tried as an adult for killing? Give me a break. So if abusers repent, they don't deserve to be punished, or just good, Christ, quote unquote, good Christians on TV. Does it worry anyone he has children? Wow. And and that was not my comment. That was the actual last word in that comment. <laughs> just yeah. I, I have to say the amount of likes on on these comments is, gives me a lot of hope. Yeah, like 757, 1164, 122 yeah. on one of them. One of them doesn't even. One of them like kind of cuts off, so we can't, can't, can't do the thing. But holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. So yeah, you you face some backlash, uh, Mister Mister Huckabee Fuckabee. Uh, Huckabee Fuckabee, I'm a bee. I don't know. Oh, uh, so yeah, there is. There's actually one other thing. This might butch the show over a little bit. But there's one thing I want to bring up, and one thing that I know a lot of people that I've, at least that I've noticed, also pull in, and I think we kind of touched on it a little bit when I mentioned the uh, robocalls, is that it exposes a lot of their blatant hypocrisy too. And 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 this one, this new story out of Raw Story, Jessa Duggar's father-in-law rails against unwed mothers and sex ed in rant defending Josh. Oh, boy. Uh, Michael Seawald, Jessa Duggar's father-in-law, ranted against Planned Parenthood, the Hollywood film industry, and a U.S. culture consumed by quote-unquote youthful lust in a lengthy blog post defending the Duggar family, including embattled ex-lobbyist Josh Duggar, the U.S. Weekly reports. Josh Duggar, who along with his family started the hit TV show, reality TV show 19 Kids Accounting. Yeah, 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 we got that. Which, by the way, as, as a bit of a side note, because I know some people you know are, are are happy about it as far as i know tlc has just pulled their show off the schedule i don't know if they've canceled it completely i hope they've canceled it because yeah and knowing what we um, know now that would make it very very crazy. they'll probably be in, in a position where they're forced to because there has been a lot of speculation that they actually knew about mm-hmm. this going into shooting the show because years ago um they were invited to be guests on oprah Mm-hmm. And somebody informed Oprah, hey, listen, this is what happened. And Oprah rescinded the invitation, and they did not appear on her show. Wow. Oh, dear. Ah, hmm. somebody, somebody's got their head in the noose there. Neck in the noose, rather. I don't know. Potentially. I don't know if that's the right analogy, but we'll go with it. 
Since that story was published, Seawall's screed begins, the internet and media have exploded with stories and blogs, many of them lining up to throw stones at Josh and the whole Duggar family. I'd rather not discuss something of this nature on my blog, he continues, especially since it is dredging up past sins that have been painfully grieved over once already by all involved. Nevertheless, Seawall proceeds to opine on the Duggar's ongoing PR challenges for more than 1,900 additional words. Damn. I believe that Josh's parents acted in a way that godly parents should. Seawall writes of the Duggar's parents' reaction to learning their son was molesting their daughters. In their efforts to salvage the wreckage that, it, that these transgressions brought and bring healing to all involved, Jim, Bob, and Michelle are to be commended. I almost read committed, but no. Uh. Well, they probably should be. Let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Authorities investigated Josh Duggar on sexual assault charges years after some of them had taken place. 2006, an anonymous tipster, like like you had mentioned earlier, alerted Oprah Winfrey's television network to Josh Duggar's reported crimes, which prompted Harpo Studios to contact police about the allegations. Arkansas police recently released investigative documents to In Touch Weekly in response to a Freedom of Information Act request. Duggar was never prosecuted. But are Jim, Bob, and Michelle to be scolded for raising their children with high moral standards and this moral failing evidence that they are legalistic hypocrites? Seawald asked rhetoric. He asked. He asked rhetorically, "No." There are others that see this episode as a result of sheltering and repressing human desires. Seawald says of the Duggar scandal unfolding on the news and social media. They think that they that he had access to sex education, but they think that he had he access to sex education and Planned Parenthood, been allowed to watch edgy Hollywood films, been encouraged to experimentation with a girlfriend, or gotten free condoms from the local school nurse, then none of this would have happened. Right. <laughs> That just annoys me. No, I don't think that that was the deciding factor. I think the deciding factor is that your fucking sect of a religion treats women like they're sex objects. Yeah. Yeah, like they're sex <laughs> objects and baby carriages. Yeah, Pretty much. But, like that's your entire existence as a woman. So no, I like. Do I think specifically sex education would have helped him? No, I don't. I think had you taught him that a woman isn't just there to have your babies and be a place to put your dick, <laughs> then, you know, maybe he might have known that you shouldn't touch people. Yeah. See, see that, that, that is one... Yeah. Women are not just warm whole, basically. Ugh. So, yeah, the stupidity of some people's mind-boggling flan the fames of youthful lust, and you end up with what we have. Unprecedented numbers of unwed mothers, millions of abortions, rampant STDs, and the unraveling of the fabric of our whole society. Yeah, one of those fuckers. Because, of course, you know, yeah, we... we, 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 we of course, encourage... states that practice abstinence-only education have such a lower rate of STDs <laughs> than pregnant, teen pregnancy, right? Uh-huh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like, what state is it that now that they hand out, I think it might be Colorado, but that now that they hand out condoms for free in schools, well, it turns out they have a much lower teen pregnancy rate. Imagine yeah. that. Because imagine that. Kids still like to have sex. They like to do things that feel good, and they like to defy authority. Yeah. Who would have thought? Oh, my. At least now, with the condoms being passed out, they could do it safely. Yeah, it's just oh. like, all right, let's do this. Oh, actually, yeah, no, I know. I've got, I've got something to, to decrease our chances of anything happening, anything else happening that, you know, might get us in trouble or, you know, might might just be stupid. Yeah. Like, so, just diving in without a rain jacket. Yeah. Never. No, just no, no. So what is the ultimate answer, asks Seawald before replying. The answer is what Josh found in millions like him. He found forgiveness and cleansing from Jesus Christ. Again, good for you that doesn't free you from the consequences of the real world actions. Real world, this world, whichever way you want to look at it. Jesus forgives repentant sinners, Seawalt explains. Real sinners, murderers, thieves, child molesters, homosexuals, not a sin, self-righteous oh churchgoers, the proud, liars, scoffers, atheists, hypocrites, and any other sin or combination of them all. All that is required to come to Jesus confess all that is required is to come to Jesus confessing that you are a sinner and with faith that his death will avail for you. He will receive you and begin the process of salvaging your life for his glory. So it doesn't matter after you get saved what you do. I mean you're already forgiven. You're good. Who fucking cares? Yeah. I want to say that the Seawald family stands with the Duggar family in solidarity. 
see Wald affirms, we stand with the unnamed victims of these incidents. Our thoughts and prayers are for you. That is probably the only thing in this whole 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 spiel that I could probably even remotely get behind. Standing with the unnamed victims, thoughts and prayers are are, are for them. I can get behind that. It's probably but, also the most disingenuous part of this entire thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to say to Josh, hang in there, the shame you feel is legitimate, yet Jesus took your shame as he was punished in your place. Rest in his forgiveness and grace. Yeah, I'll try telling that to people who still want to take pitches, pitchforks and uh, torches to him. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, rest in his... Yeah, 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 I read that. Remember that he gives you his righteousness as a covering for your shame. Let this trial in your life build humility and grace. Don't be angry at the world for their hatred of you. Show them through your love for them that it is Jesus Christ that made all the difference in your life. I am rooting for you. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to stand over here. I'm going to say, okay, you know, if you know, don't, you know, I, w I would like people to not kill him. Um, I would, I would rather, you know, people be better. But you know, the metaphorical pitchforks and torches go right ahead. Metaphorical, you know, because you know. I mean, yeah, again, again, you know, we, we keep kind of looping back to that. Again, yeah, your God has forgiven you. Good for you. But you still it doesn't to... mean, yeah, doesn't mean everybody else has. And regardless of whether or not, you know, we have the right to feel, I mean, yeah, regardless of whether or not it's like we have a right to feel like it's just like, or whether or not you need our forgiveness. It's, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be called out for your actions and a mealy mouth, but God forgave me. Excuse me. Like, God is not recognized by the by federal law. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry. Like, this is, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, oh, God forgave me. You could just be saying that, man. It's so easy to say a thing. It's far harder to actually do the thing. Yeah. Uh, just damn... Uh, go, he, toward the end of his missive, he acknowledges victims of sexual abuse, conceding millions of people experience abuse at some point in their lives. Seawald urges them to speak out and publicly name the perpetrator. Tell someone you trust, a parent, a teacher, a friend, anyone is better than silence, Seawald writes. Tell someone so that they will be stopped. If the person you tell doesn't contact the right people to help, tell someone else. Stay away from the abuser if at all possible, or avoid being alone with them. If the abuser is in your family, you may feel conflicted. Understatement of the fucking century. And and uh, this one of those cases where it just seems like easier said than done, pal. Because yeah, yeah, logically, you go and you tell somebody, and and you name your perpetrator. You you name the abuser. Logically, that makes sense. Yeah. But, but then you know you have all of the illogical things. That go well, on. the thing is, if you're willing to actually attach your name to something like this, especially mm -hmm. if it's with a high-profile family, mm -hmm. and that you know has a lot of obviously has a lot of sway with you know their region, if you know if you were one of those unnamed victims and you decided no, I'm going to go out and I'm going to make myself you know make this public because you know these people are are horrible and they're covering this up or they're you know w whatever they're not you know dealing dealing with it the way they probably should. Then that person would be prone to just the absolute worst kinds of harassment because we've seen that we saw that with the whole Steubenville bullshit when the the victim of of that that incident got out you know her her identity got out and everybody you know was it oh God, was it Steubenville even I feel I think so Steubenville Steubenville I think I I want to say she was slut shamed because she was raped and the rape was. It was one caught on, def you know, definitely caught on camera because the idiot <laughs> football players filmed it. Right, and it, it's just that that whole deal of, vic of then a victim blaming, and if the person's identity actually gets out, then they're going to be subject, um, almost assuredly, it, it, in this day and age, it's, uh, almost assuredly subject to just the worst kinds of harassment from the, you know, mouth breathing cretins who just crawl out of the corners of the internet to talk about. Something that they believe in. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know what it is at this point. Yeah, it's just uh So he he wraps up, you know, talking, uh, you know, talking about, you know, you if, yeah, if for those who bear, I do empathize. 
You don't think it's possible that many people have found it, turned to Jesus Christ, you know, because, you know, not, you know, because apparently that's the main way to do it, not going to a fucking doctor or something, you know. But, you know, eh, yeah, whatever. You know, and, and the article finishes out with a little background on him about about Jessa and, and, and all of them. But uh, that that's not as important. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. uh, so to, to wrap up a bit, uh, my, my final thoughts on all of this, uh, like I said earlier, Josh Duggar, I, I yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I can't, obviously I will never defend him, but compared to what his family has done, covering it up, and, and, and like we also brought up, you know, a psych, you know, basically a cycle of abuse thing, what the hell did his parents do to him, or let happen to him, that, you know, that could have brought the circle around, and just the whole covering it up and, and, and you know if you're if you're unironically defending him to the point uh, that that Mike Huckabee and this this other guy what was his name uh, C, um, Michael Seawald are defending him then you just you, know, you you stay over there you stay over there and and enjoy yourself I'm gonna be over here with the rest of the people who could not defend him from something like this just just no just no. I'm glad, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see that he is finally getting some consequences, you know, paying some consequences for his actions, even if it's not legally. But, you know, I, I will take what I can get. Uh, oh, I will, I'll, I'll just say, uh, you know, in sort of in summation that uh, after just sort of going over this stuff a bit and just, go, you know, just doing this podcast, I, I will say I have decidedly more empathy than I do. I did for for Josh uh, before we started before I really knew much of anything. But yeah, that's not to say that that I I, I agree with his actions in any way. It's just my God, the, I have more honestly. I I guess I have more empathy and more. I feel so much so much worse for all the those kids stuck in the Quiverful movement who are just growing up into these warped, archaic mindsets that just encourage the men to treat the women like objects and the women to just accept it because that's how it was that's how it's supposed to be and don't question it god yeah 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 and it's just it's sad and I, I i feel so bad for for all those kids who just don't realize what what what's going on yeah, yeah. Uh, you... i do too i i feel like that should be the the larger issue and for a couple of reasons. I mean, one, because, you know, let's stop condemning children to grow up like this. I mean, yeah, there's not a whole lot we can do. But, you know, the, the thing you don't want to do is when you find out that, you know, someone from a cult did something bad is be like, oh, well, you're a terrible human being. And how dare you? Because you know what? They're going to be like. Yeah, well, you know, I did this terrible thing and, you know, all of these other people think that, you know, I should be forgiven and whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, okay, so if we just, if all we do is tell people you're you're horrible and you're bad and you can never be forgiven, and <laughs> like, we're not helping in any way. Yeah. No, I... I so I... so let's, let's try and fi- figure out a way for this to help. It doesn't make what he did okay. What he did was awful and wrong. Um, and I hope that that he actually understands that. Um, I hope so, and, too. And I hope that... Uh, I don't know if he has any sons, but, you know, I hope that that is something that gets passed on to his family. That, yes. like, listen, <laughs> um, yeah. y- y- your spouse is not a sex toy. That they They don't just exist for that. The other, no. the opposite sex is not a sex toy, so don't treat them like that. Yeah. No, they are a fully conscious human being that there may be differences between the two of you, but they are just as human as you <laughs> are, and they have just the, they have the same thoughts, feelings, and um, emotions that that we do. So, yeah, treat treat them appropriately because you know you came from one of them. Yeah. We all and did. I'm... So sh- Jesus. And above all, like, I feel bad for these girls because it's like, okay, now people don't want to let this issue go. But who does this hurt? Does this really hurt Josh Duggar? I I mean, yeah, he had to resign his position. But let's face it, at the end of the day, there are people who did a lot worse things than him who are still way more famous than he is. This is true. 
So, you know, in the long run, is it really going to hurt him? Not as much as people want to believe it will. Who it does hurt are the people he molested. Because yeah. Yeah. now this issue is being shoved in their face every day. And there's been plenty of victim blaming going around, even for people who think that what Josh did was a morally reprehensible thing. And that's the thing that's, like, deeply disturbing to me about this. People are like, oh, man. Josh Duggar molested his sisters, and look, I'm like, they're posting selfies on Instagram. Like, who gives a fuck if they're posting selfies on Instagram? Like, guess what? They're trying to move on with their lives, you know? Yeah, they're probably they, trying to forget that this ever happened. And just... Thank goodness for that. Like, yeah. uh, let's, let's not make this their problem, you know? Well, and it's not it, like they could really do anything else, you know, about it. It's, like, it's not like they could post, you know, something to... Instagram or Facebook and just be like, yeah, this all. I mean, it would stir up a lot, but you know, they could just be like, well, we we don't really talk to th that person anymore. They they yeah. just they have it out for us, or I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's so weird, and I I just yeah I I agree that there's there's there needs to be more empathy for these kids that are being raised in 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 this situation, and if they do something fucked up, they need to be held accountable for it, but. Mm -hmm. Come on, like yeah. ugh, fundamentalism, man. Yeah, it's a. Yeah. It, it, if religion helps you get through the day, and if it and if it helps make you a genuinely and you know better person to, you know whatever that that even fucking means, mm -hmm. but if it leads to you you know hurting somebody, or if it leads to to your children hurting somebody, or I don't know, I mean, you got to reexamine something. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh, so, so with all of that, all of that said, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and I do want to reiterate, like, like one other thing, you know, we did spend a lot of time talking about, you know, like the 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 you know Josh Duggar and Mike Huckabee, and and the people that are speaking out against, you know, defending him, you know, def defending everything, and 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 concentrating a little bit more on that, but. You know, like like I, I I think it was Michael Seawald who said, you know, yeah, you know, thoughts and prayers or whatever are with the victims, and I can say that for one hundred percent that while we don't we didn't concentrate on talking about the victims because that would kind of make for a, a, a really odd and, and slow show, I guess, but but you know, just just know that for these victims, you know, you know, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure I can speak for both of you that. Even as as far as now, knowing you know, and as we're learning everything, our hearts do go out to them. And 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 like you were saying, the ones that are posting the selfies on Instagram, good for them, good for them, you know. And that hopefully, once all this blows over, because you know it's going to eventually, you know, that they can get back and live at least semi-normal lives, you mm -hmm. know, without having to be in their face. And 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 now I I admit I feel a little bad now because it's like, yeah, we're kind of contributing to it, but. At the same time, you know, <laughs> it's it's one of those things that continues to be mind boggling to me because it's like people people do things that are bad all the time. And mm -hmm. yeah, that, you know, it, it, some of the things that Mike Huckabee and whatever Seawald said aren't wrong. Like you can do shitty things and still be a good person. Yeah. Um, But, you know. <laughs> It's all about. Yeah, it's about what happened and how and how it happened and what you've done after the fact, like you were saying earlier, Gonzo. And until he starts to do something after the fact, like, you know, I, yeah. I I'm not gonna make any huge judgment calls about him either way. It happened a long time ago. I I don't know if he learned anything from it or not. I hope and he, he was did. Very clearly involved in like you know a. Uh you know, religiously motivated organization that mm -hmm. was looking to keep gay people as down as possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, yeah, he was just, just, you know, just went on as though nothing, you know, really happened in his life. And, uh, then now that this is all coming to light. Maybe he actually will start getting, maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe he does feel genuinely repentant and he's not just saying that to try and salvage what little, mm -hmm. you know, dignity you know or credibility he's got left but again yeah it just it's we just need to see what that what that what what that'll happen with that 
Yeah. Right, and the thing about that that I, I just think is crazy, uh, and I hate to drag the show on a little longer, but it, it's one of those things that I feel is like pretty important to note. It's yeah. like if they had come out with this information years ago, like it would have been way less of a big deal, mm-hmm. and, and that's because people would have been more willing to be like, "Oh well, he was a kid, and you know he didn't know." It. Like they still would have thought it was awful. But it it would have been more understanding than trying to cover up the bad thing that you did. And I feel like that's what, that's the point that a lot of people seem to be missing in their uh, anger. Especially where Jim Bob is concerned, because, I mean, if he'd come out and just, and, you know, been very strong, it's like, my son did a very terrible, terrible thing. And, you know, we have sent him to get help. We have, you know, sent the victims, the, you know, we're not going to name the victims or, you know, allude to who they even might be, but we've sent the victims to, you know, make sure that they can receive counseling and we have, you know, we are taking whatever steps are necessary to get our son help, to get the victims help, and to stop this terrible thing from ever happening again. Yeah. Ba-boom. Right, and in- instead what they did was they covered up for years and years and years and years and years. And, and now they're being are- called out on it. Right, and that's when people are like, "Wait a second, yeah. <laughs> like there's there's definitely something wrong here. Do, like, do you even understand that what you did is wrong? It's hard to tell because you covered it up for such a long time, and, and it's like, okay, there. I mean, like I said before, there are famous people out there who have done terrible things who are still famous despite terrible things that they did. There's yeah. <laughs> like there's a guy who's an actor. Um, mostly for the Disney Channel. He's been on a bunch of different stuff. He <laughs> uh, killed a guy uh, drunk driving many, many years ago. Oh, wow. He's still employed by Disney because, you know, this ha- they recognize... Well, <laughs> okay, so there's the factor that he is an adult. Yeah. Um, and that, that's me clarifying that I, I'm generally not appreciative of how they treat their child talent. But, <laughs> um, you know, just because you've done something horrendous doesn't mean that you don't learn from it and, you know, can't make something of your life after the fact. Right. But this was information that was never a secret. And I feel like, yeah, okay, there's a stigma and a lot of times very justified, especially depending on what you did. Um but that doesn't mean that it should necessarily be a secret. Right. Because it, in the end, it only ends up hurting people. Yeah. So, yep. so with all of that, I, I will, I will, I'll, I'll end it with this. With Josh Duggar, I'm hoping that, you know, like, like you two were talking about, he'll learn from this, move forward. That, that, that is, that is now my, my honest hope. You know, he, he's, he's paying the price. You know, in some way, shape, or form, he's humiliated. He's he's having to step down, which I'm sure is a big blow to him. So to us, it may be like, oh, you just had to quit the thing. But to him, it's probably a big deal. And my hope is he learns from this and passes on his knowledge to future generations to where maybe they don't do something like this. That That is going to be my biggest hope. That, you know, like you guys are saying, that he actually does learn from this. Yeah. That's That's all I hope is that... Anybody involved in this type of shit that does something this terrible realizes it and does everything that they can to make to make it better. Yes, because they can never truly you can never truly fix something like that. I mean, one, once you once you molest somebody, that's a line you can never truly yeah. cross back from. Mm-hmm. So you'd better be prepared to spend the rest of your life making it better for them until they're like, you know what, I, you, you you've you clear. You clearly are repentant. You have my blessing to like move on or whatever. And you know, what? if that never comes, then too bad. You yeah. fucked up, and that's just something you can never take back. Yeah, basically. So on that note, we're gonna get out of here, and hopefully, it won't take us. Oh well, God, how long was it? A month again? <laughs> uh. More like two. I felt like. Jeebus, it's too long. We we. Yeah. We, well, yeah. you know, hey, with with my recording schedule opening up a little bit more, maybe things will be a little bit better. Who knows? Well, well, I'm actually I'm going to be moving into a different room in the the house that I'm actually living in, which will have much more room, so I'll be able to move my microphone there. Sweet. 
Yeah. Alrighty. So uh, until then, uh, if we wanted to find Holly on the social medias, where could we find her? You can find me all over the place as Gooky Gox, G O O K Y G O X. That's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. I'm on Facebook as Holly Christine Brown. That's my fan page. And you can find me over at Nerdvice. And keep your eyes open because in a couple of days, there's going to be an announcement on a new site. <gasps> oh, I think I, I, I think I know what it is, but no spoilers. Mm, 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 mm. No spoilers. Or, okay. Uh, if, and if we wanted to find Gonzo on the social media, where could we find him? Oh, you can find me on YouTube and Twitter and Tumblr at Gonzo Link and uh, my own podcast, Focus on the Frames, that I host with Zenith Will Rule. You can find that at Focus on the Frames Podcast dot com and on Zenith's YouTube channel, Zenith Will Review. And uh, I also have an Instagram, and uh, I also do voice acting. I do. Um, uh, I'm on the Team Brotherhood, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Bridge. I play the narrator, and also a good classic, the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. Sweet. And if you wanted to find me on the social medias, you could find me on Twitter and Tumblr and all those places as gomer 21 X, uh, which should extend to my YouTube channel. I, I don't know what the URL is up with that one is. I don't even know anymore. But um, you just look up Gomer the Ranting Thespian on YouTube or just click the YouTube link on this video if you're watching it on one of the sites and it should take you right to it. Um, I also have my own fan page at, at Gomer the Ranting Thespian. I Believe, I believe the actual URL is Gomer Ranting Thespian. That'll be down below along with the links and, and stuff for you guys' stuff as well. Uh, also, you can find other shows and things that I've produced on nerdvice.com and rtgomer.com. Uh, in fact, just this past week I did put up a, a, a new video review for Game Companion. Go check it out. I am, I am very proud of it. And, and of course, if you like the artwork, um, there's also links to you know, give Becky a, 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 some some monies for some commissions, and her webcomic, Otherworldly. Uh, all that is below if you're watching this on, on the uh, sites or on YouTube or whatever. So, uh, yeah, everything else you need to know about me, Patreon, whatever, that's still in the post-show bumper. Uh, so, yeah, check it out. If you like it, throw some money. It, it, would, it would help a lot. It really does. Um, so with that, thank you guys for listening. We will see you next time, or actually catch you next time. You, I don't think we're, you're going to see us, but we will catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up my own end. Uh, uh what so, else is new? Yeah. So until <laughs> next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Bye. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Exhilarate by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly patron-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows. I was just saying, I, I mean, I don't even want to make it like, you know, a third world thing, but it's just, oh God, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my cat does not agree with me. Kitty. <laughs> All right. Um, Good people make mistakes and do regrettable and even disgusting things, like mowing the lawn while I'm trying to record. <laughs>